Well, hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alison, the online piano and the online violin tutor. So in today's video, I'm gonna give you five practice tips from a pro violinist. Okay, so let's just get straight into it. Tip number one, practice every day. Now, I know that seems fairly obvious and you know, why didn't I think of that? But you know, c consistency is, is key. And you know, I appreciate that you guys have other things to do in life and you know, this, that and the other. Life gets in the way, you know, we know that. When no one's judging, that's that. But if you can't practice every day, practice as much as you can. So ideally, in an ideal world, here it comes, you wanna be practicing seven days a week. And I would say if you are a beginner level, so if you've just if you've just started out, if you've just started on a course, my one to 30 violin course, links below, if you've just started a violin course, then you want to be practicing around about, probably about 30, maybe to 45 minutes a day. By the time you've done everything you need to do and everything, probably if you are really beginning, if you are really starting out, a minimum of 30 minutes. There's, there's plenty to fill your time up with 30 minutes. So the further you go on, you wanna be practicing obviously a lot longer than that. So a minimum would be every day for 30 minutes if you are a complete beginner, and then upwards from there, then you'd be looking at kind of 45 minutes, then you'd be looking at an hour, because the further on in the course you're gonna get, or the further on, whatever you're doing, if, you, if you've got a private teacher at home, whatever you've got, the further on you get, the more you're gonna be adding to your practice session. You're gonna be doing scales and arpeggios, technical exercises, you're gonna be going back and practicing previous things that you've learned earlier on in the course or your books or whatever your teacher has set you, but also you're gonna be adding on pieces to that as well. So try and practice every day for 30 minutes obviously a minimum. If you cannot practice every day, then you wanna be practicing six days a week. If you can't practice six days a week, try and practice five days a week. What you really don't wanna do is go into this with the aim of practicing maybe one to two times a week. If that's all you can fit in, then I would probably say don't bother. Um, I know that sounds really harsh, but just practicing once or twice a week is, isn't actually gonna get you anywhere at all. So let's just say you start on Monday, you start with lesson one, you know, you learn how to hold, I'm talking about my lessons here just to be easier, lesson one, you know, you're learning how to hold the violin and how, how to hold the bow, and then that's it. You put it down, go away, and then you do nothing for a whole entire week, and then the following Monday, you try and pick up the bow again, and then you literally can't remember how to hold the bow. So then you've regressed back an entire week, and then you're having to go back again and learn how to hold the bow all over again. However, if you'd spent that week just picking up the violin, putting the violin in place, picking up the bow, getting your bow grip in place, putting it down, picking it up again, getting the bro bow grip in place, put, getting the violin up in place, etc., etc. putting it down, picking it up again. You see where I'm going with here? So if you did that every single day, um, or you know, for a few days and then moved on to the next lesson, you know, whatever, depending on which course you're following, then by the following week, you've nailed that part and then you can move on to the next part and that's the whole point, it's cumulative information. So it's no different than your teacher, um, your, your teacher sends you home, say you're having a private teacher or whatever, they send you home with a piece of music and say, right, I want you to have a look at that and the, you know this is brand new today, let's see how far you get in a week. You go away, you do absolutely nothing for the entire week except the night before you've got your next lesson and you don't really know what you're doing, you can't do it, basically you, you're wasting that teacher's time. So you've wasted a whole entire week. So if you've got an only practice once or twice a week, I would say don't bother, pick up the violin, start learning the violin when you can dedicate a good five days a week, five to seven days a week. I, If, if I'm being completely honest, I would probably say five days a week practice has gotta be a minimum that you would realistically wanna practice any less than that. You know, and I think, I think you're gonna regress quite a lot. I don't think you're gonna have learned enough. You, you, I mean, you just won't progress. I mean, what you'll be on the same level for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks, and then you'll get frustrated, and then you'll just be putting the violin down and thinking this is garbage, this is just complete crap, this isn't what I signed up for, all because you've got yourself into that cycle of just not practicing. So tip number one, try and practice every day. Number two, pra structure your practice sessions. So have an idea of what you're gonna practice. Don't just be going in, scrabbling around for books and everything, scattergunning all over the place. Whatever you're doing, 
um, have, have a process as to what you're going to practice. So let's say, for example, that you are working through my one to 30 violin course. And if you are not, then my one to 30 violin course is a fully interactive and downloadable course that will take you from a complete beginner to an accomplished intermediate player in 30 lessons. The course comprises of the first 10 lessons being absolutely free with all the resources and materials that you need, along with three tutorial books and three songbooks. I'll put some I'll put some information and links underneath this video, but I guarantee that after the first 10 lessons, you will be playing like you have never imagined before. No scams, no overhyping, just learning the professional way and the classical way. So imagine that you are working your way through, uh, let's say, uh, violin book two. So this is le lessons 11 to 20. So when you're working your way through this book, there are some scales and things like that. So you've got your technical exercises. So scales are going to help you with your intonation. They're going to help you just generally, they're, they're the building blocks of learning the violin. So you need to learn those because they're going to help you learn the pieces. So you're going to be working through the scales. Uh, and that kind of thing and any, any other theory that the book talks about and then it will start talking about there'll be pieces in here and it will start talking about the fourth finger the second finger all that kind of thing so if you're working through this book you'll be starting with some scales that it's it's gradually starting to teach you and then after that you'll be playing the pieces but before that you will have you, you will have been playing the pieces from songbook one. So after the first 10 lessons, you know, that are absolutely free, you'll have moved on to songbook one. But before you play any pieces, I would always recommend that you start with any technical work. So make sure you have written down in front of you exactly what scales you're gonna be doing, exactly what technical work and all that kind of thing. Your teacher will have set this all up for you as well. They'll they'll you know they'll usually write things down and say, okay, this scale, that scale, G major, D major, A major, E major, one octave, two octaves, whatever it is you've got to do, and then this piece, that piece, and the other piece that you've got to play. And then they'll tell you specifically what it is that you've got to work on for each scale or for each piece. So make sure that you structure your practice sessions so you know that you're going to be doing this, 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 followed by this and this. I wouldn't give yourself time limits because that's just going to be a little bit silly because you're going to end up rushing through. So don't, you know, I, I wouldn't want to give yourself 10 minutes to do scales and things. Scales take as long as they do, you know, 10 minutes on a certain piece. It's going to take as long as it's going to take. Okay, number three, check your posture. So you always want to make sure that you're holding the violin in the right place. It doesn't actually hurt just to make sure that the violin is sitting around about 10 o'clock or somewhere between 10 and 11 o'clock. We don't want the violin out here. We don't want the violin out the front. We don't want the violin up here. We don't want the violin there. So check your posture because posture is everything. And also don't forget, don't forget to check your bow hold as well because if, you, if you're not holding the violin right, you're not holding the bow right, you might as well just forget it. So always check those things. Uh, number five, practice slowly. People just don't want to practice slowly. It's just not in our nature to practice slowly because we want everything now. We want it yesterday, don't we? So you have to practice slowly to get anywhere. So you just, just make sure that you practice slowly. So if you are playing, in songbook one, there is a piece called Drunken Sailor. So we all know Drunken Sailor. That's going to be going, uh, that's supposed to be a, a fast piece, isn't it? But what we want to do is try it slower. increase the speed of it. and so on and so on. But you've got to do a lot of laborious, slow practicing. Nobody wants to play anything really, really slow. But if you can't play it slow, you definitely absolutely cannot play it fast. So just slow down your practicing. Again, it's just another one of those things that seems really obvious, but nobody tends to do it. So make sure you discipline yourself to play really slowly. Um, 
And also number six, break your practicing or your pieces or whatever into smaller little chunks. So for example, the drunken sailor that we've got here at the end of book one, we've got one, two, three, four, five. We've got six lines there, but it's kind of broken into two lines, two lines, and two lines. So probably what I would do if it was me and I were you and I were in your position, I would probably play the first two lines over and 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 then I'd do them over and 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 then over and over and over you get the point again nobody wants to practice that because it's just too much but however many times i said over you know it must have been a good 50 times i would practice the first two lines 50 times before i moved on and I'm gonna be sick to the back teeth of playing those two lines 50 damn times, but I can tell you by the 50th time, there'll, there'll not be a single mistake in there. My playing will be better, everything will be better. It just has to be after 50 times. That takes however long that takes, maybe 15 minutes, because it's not very long, is it? Then I do the next two lines 50 times. You're gonna be sick of the drunken sailor at the end of this. And then I would do the bottom two lines 50 times. And then, depending on how annoyed I was with the piece at the time, I would probably do uh, the first two lines and the second two lines 50 times. Then I do the second two lines and the third block 50 times. And then I'd do the whole thing 50 times. I mean, you know, seriously, I mean, if, if 50 is too much, you know, make it 20. It was just an arbitrary number I just plucked out of the air. But you, you get the point I'm making. You've got to be repetitive. You've got to break things down into chunks. And that, my friends, is called practicing. Most people think that practicing is just playing this through from start to finish a couple of times. Boom, that's it. Violin away, off your pop, out with your mates, out down the pub. When I, when I have some of my younger students with me, or well, just, just any students actually really, I don't really wanna even limit it to, to children because I get the same answer out of adults. And I will say to them, look, be 100% honest with me here, no judgment, no getting in trouble, nothing like that. What do you do on a practice session? And I will get them to admit to me what they do when they practice. You know, they'll sit down at the piano or they'll, they'll pick up the violin and I want them to give me a blow by blow of exactly what they do. And it's astonishing what they'll say. So their version of practice will be to play the piece, whatever piece in question, maybe once, twice, three times through, and then that's it, that's practice. That is not practice. Practice is the definition, my definition of practice is that you are better at the end of that practice session. You have accomplished something. What they're doing is just maintaining. So they're not actually practicing. They're not going in rubbish and then coming out really good. It's like going to the gym and lifting up some, some weights and maybe just lifting up two, pulling up two weights, lifting up lifting up weights twice and then that's it, leaving the gym and that's all you've done. And then wondering why you're not actually building strength because you're not, you're, you're just maintaining, you're not actually sort of building anything. It's not quite the same analogy, but you get what I'm saying. So break things down and do a lot of it. So that's it, that's enough about practice. I think you all get the idea of that. Thank you very much for watching. I'm gonna put some more information about my one to 30 violin course directly underneath this video. If you wanna know how, or if, if you wanna get into playing more about the violin, maybe you're not following a course yet, but the first 10 lessons with everything that you need, they're, they're, nothing's locked down in the first 10 lessons. It's just a very good taster. It's not one of those things where I've just hidden loads of stuff for the first 10 lessons. I've thrown everything out there for the first 10 lessons I guarantee by lesson 10 you will want to buy the rest of the course because you'll you you just won't believe where you're going to be at lesson 10. So thank you for watching, information underneath, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!